pray for a powerful move of the Holy Spirit among the Atoni. Draw those who lack a biblical understanding of the gospel message to the place of truth, spiritual conviction and repentance. May the Atoni see the need for a personal born-again faith that is rooted in the centrality of Christ and the authority of your word. Dispel every form of spiritual darkness, keeping lives bound in sin and deception. Heal those who remain haunted by the violence of Timor-Leste's turbulent modern history. Extend the outreach among the Atoni. Let the believers be strengthened spiritually and adequately discipled. Father, may the Atoni enthrone the resurrected Christ as their Saviour and King. This we pray in His mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you everyone. You may be seated. All right, once again, good morning and welcome. Before we take the offering, you know, we want to also acknowledge those of you who are here for the first time. I was sitting right behind and I've noticed a few. So, you know, if you're sitting next to somebody new, you know, maybe you just want to nudge them and like, hey, I shook your hand just now. You want to stand together with me? Come on, can we do that? Can we do that, church? Can we do that new life? Look around you. If it's your wife, don't ask them to stand up. Lah, huh? yeah. All right, we have one here. We have, a new, we have a, new, a new family here. Welcome, welcome. Anyone else? Come on. Church, look around you. Come on, church. Look around you and look and ask them. If you see a new face, welcome them and then ask them, hey, can I stand with you? you know, I would like to welcome you warmly to new life. Come on, church. All right, let's just take a few seconds. All right, yep, at the back there. All right, that's my dad. No, not the white guy. Not the guy in the white. There, that's, that's my dad, not the guy in white, yes. Welcome, welcome, and that's Colin, by the way. And Auntie Colin, Auntie Colin, welcome, welcome, yeah. If you, wanna, if you wanna stand, you can stand. I think the lady in blue, yeah, I think you're new. Welcome, welcome, thank you everyone, thank you. Thank you for coming to New Life. Do stick around and, uh, you know, we have refreshments later. Like I always like to say when I'm chairing, we have very good refreshments, so stick around, all right? Okay. Um, let's just say a word of prayer to our newcomers. Thank you, Lord, for bringing newcomers to our church today, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for giving the, them a lot the, ex, the um, opportunity, Lord, to experience your presence here, Lord, with us today, Lord. Lord, we want to acknowledge those who are here for the first time, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them here, Lord. And, Lord, let them have a good experience of you here, Lord. Let them... Um, encounter you a lot today throughout the service Lord for those who are new and also watching online that you will also be with them wherever they are Lord so we pray all this in your precious and wonderful name Amen and now the offering alright as usual there are the ways that you can give you know there are two QR codes there My, I remind you one is for um, Maybank and the other one is for Touch and Go alternatively you can also um, do a bank transfer to us, that's to Public Bank, the account number is there, and checks, do address them to New Life Community Church. Um, alternatively, if you are a cash is king kind of person, there's a blue box right behind, right outside the end, right as you exit um, the sanctuary later, you can drop your offering there. Let's uh, say a word of prayer for the offering. Father Lord, we thank you Lord for giving us this opportunity Lord to give back to you Lord. We know that you don't need it, but Lord, that as you have blessed us, Lord, that you would give, that whatever portion that we give back to you, Lord, that you use it, Lord, to extend your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we know that as we give cheerfully, Lord, that you are no man's debtor, Lord. As we give cheerfully, Lord, that you would use this offering, Lord, to bless those in need. And Lord, that you also um, bless us, Lord, in return, Lord, as we give, Lord. This we pray in your precious and wonderful name. Amen. All right, let's move on to the announcements. Okay, Chinese service today, as usual, at 3 p.m. We have Pastor Betty Chu. She was here a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so, uh, giving us a sermon. So she will be preaching today at 3 p.m. Um, by the way, Pastor Betty is um, the wife of Pastor Chu, who leads the Bahasa service upstairs. All right, next. Okay, Wednesday prayer service. This Wednesday, 14th of August, 8.30 p.m. at the Sanctuary at the sanctuary, yeah? And there is no prayer watch this Saturday. That is on the 17th. So come on Wednesday, don't come on Saturday, okay? If you come on Saturday, you just wait here for a few hours, then Sunday, we will have service. All right, okay. Or not, you can join the worship team when they practice. Yeah, nice one, John. Next. All right, okay. 
um, on a more solemn mat on a more solemn matter, we'd like to extend our condolences to Sister Julie Fu and Brother Yu Pong of Alpha CG on the passing away of her father, his father-in-law, Mr. Fu Chi Peng, on Monday, the 5th of August. Um, Uncle Fu was a philanthropist and he gave generously to those in need. The love gives the family received will be channeled to the church um, community service ministry. We want to thank them. Sister Julie and Brother Yu Pong and family would like to thank each and every one of you for the support and prayers during their recent bereavement. Next. All right. This is a vintage wines um, event that they organized, but I heard last week it's open to all. So it, the title of this event is Unlocking the Power of Kindness. Those who are younger in, this, in the crowd, you know, there's a song called Kill Them With Kindness. I'm not going to say who's the singer, but yes, similar, similar. Just in case you don't know what unlocking the word power of kindness means. Okay, it's um, going to be an in-house speaker. We have Auntie Angie Tam. Auntie Angie, are you here? Yes, she's here right in front. Yes, we want to thank you. Thank her for um, availing herself to speak on this particular topic. So it's going to be next Saturday at 1.30pm at Hall 1. Hall 1 is on the first floor, directly where we are at. Okay? At, yep, at Hall 1. Next. Alright, youth service. Thank you for that underwhelming um, response, guys. Youth service, guys, come on. Youth service. All right. Okay, 18 of August, that's Sunday. Next Sunday, actually, um, at 9 o'clock, also at Hall 1. And we have our very own Pastor Victoria speaking. She was here speaking last week. So she will be speaking next week at the youth service. All right, next. Okay, anniversary. Okay, this one is, uh, this one I will do it. And then we will invite Timothy to do the one after. Okay, so just a gentle reminder. We know that anniversary celebration is going to be on a Saturday, right? On the 24th. But I would like to remind everyone here that we will also have a Sunday service the next day, okay? So please show up both days. You are required two days next week or not next week, the following week um, on the 25th. Our service will be here as usual at 8.30. So do come on the Sunday and also the Saturday, alright? Okay, for the next announcement. Where is my brother from another mother, Timothy? Hey, there we go, there we go, that's him right there. Okay, come, let's invite, come on, let's give a clap to Timothy to give us the announcement. Hello church, good morning. So it's me again and again. Just a random joke from today. There's Tim in Tim Moore last day. <laughs> okay, let's just go straight to the announcement. So yeah, don't forget there's still the anniversary going on. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so let us be intentional in our invitation as one of our main purpose of organizing this anniversary is to promote intergenerational interaction. So we uh, do try to diversify your uh, guests that you are in inviting like younger generations, working adults, your family members, whether old or young, both, was, both are also can be invited. And I myself also have invited someone just yesterday actually. So yeah, you do your parts also, just, everyone just try to invite at least one person, then we have a double turnout already. <laughs> and next slide please. Yeah, and we also need your prayers. So. Uh, we need your prayer to pray for good weather so that it will be a great sunny day like Uncle Sunny there. <laughs> and a great turnout, meaningful conversation. Uh, everyone enjoy themselves to the fullest and most importantly, God to establish our steps that ultimately we as a community, our bonds will grow stronger together and also bond with Christ. Our bond with Christ will grow stronger together. And yep. And stay tuned, two more weeks left So take action and keep praying and inviting for us Thank you Alright, thanks team Thanks for the announcement just, uh, just to be on the bandwagon for puns today I did a similar announcement earlier So remember uh, Sorry, I didn't introduce myself I'm Sam So it's a similar, not Sam It's a similar, not similar announcement, okay A similar announcement just now So remember, church There's going to be our anniversary celebration on the Saturday but remember to come tomorrow, the next day on Sunday, okay? It's not a rest day for everybody, okay? We have to come back for our Sunday anniversary service. Okay, 
I believe that's all for the, the announcements. We're going to invite our speaker up shortly. But before we do, um, for all, for all the, the new newcomers today, we have Dr. Alvin Vincent with us. For those of you who are in church for the longest time, including me, he, um, Pastor, El, Pastor Alvin is no stranger to us. He has spoken a few times. You know, um, the only thing I remember about Pastor Alvin was he spoke about his life experience on eczema. You know, I, I, I too have eczema and um, as a kid, you know, now thank God I'm healed. So he is a doctor, a medical doctor. You know, he graduated from IA, I, sorry, AIMST University in 27, uh, 2007 as a medical doctor. He served in the hospital of Malacca. All right, so down the road in his life, he also preaches. I think I caught a glimpse of him on Facebook yesterday announcing that he's coming here today. And he calls himself the preaching doctor, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the preaching doctor. Yes, so speaking of which, he has uploaded 95 sermons since May of 2021. That's the tail end of COVID. So thank you for all the sermons that he has posted. Do watch them. And also, um, on an important note, that he also owns a telemed consulting company for eczema patients. Along with him, today he brought his wife, um, Alice, and also his daughter, Elena, who, are, who, is, who is present here. Maybe you can go and um, shake their hand, introduce yourself later during hospitality, but they are upstairs at the children's ministry currently at Life Kids. So without further ado, come on church, let's give Dr. Elvin a round of applause for bringing the word today. Alright, good morning NLCC, uh, I would like to thank uh, Sam and Tim, Tim is a very joyful person, I can see that. Uh, Tim, a word for you, the joy of the Lord is my strength, and he's a very strong person, I can see that. Huh? I'd like to thank also the church leadership, um, Pastor Victoria, uh, Elder Simon, uh, the deacon Michael and deaconess Sylvia, she told me not to embarrass her, so I, I purposely do it, Sylvia Aka, God bless you. Right, she doesn't like me calling her that, but never mind. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, you can actually watch a few of my sermons that I did before here. And uh, also, I want to make a shout out. Uh, is, that, is that a camera? Uh, are we live? Okay. Uh, a few of, my, uh, few of my preaching doc ministry people around Malaysia are also watching here today. So I want to just uh, bless you in the name of Jesus. And also to my mom and dad uh, in Nilai. May the Lord bless you. I come from a very valuable town. It's called Nilai. And uh, today, I'm going to share with you more on Nilai and how beautiful it is. And hopefully one day you can come and visit, have a cup of tea with me. The week leading to today was a little bit challenging. Uh, when I got a message from you, Sylvia Kai, I, my, my child had fever. And just to give you a little bit, uh, before starting, I would like to just share a quick testimony my child was born with a condition called congenital lymphatic malformation. It's a very rare disorder. In Malaysia, there are not many pediatric surgeons who are accustomed to this. There are just uh, probably a handful of them who are used to cases like this. Um, we got to know about this when she was in her mother's womb. So I can just share with you what happened and how amazing God is. So it's not a sad story. It's a great story. For those who are going through chronic disorders or some sort of disease, I want you to hear very closely because the Lord hears. He hears your cries. He, I cried a lot. My, my wife cried a lot. Uh, but God has been really faithful and really strong. So let me get right down to business. Um, when we got to know about this condition, we were told by the experts in the field, the subspecialists and so forth, that you have to expect her to get infections. And so, uh, true, true to that, uh, she was admitted a few times uh, in Kuching, uh, Kuching GH, Seremban GH, and also uh, Subang Jaya Medical Center. Just for you to take note, I'm a Subang boy, actually. And um, during the admissions, you know, for kids, it's not easy because you have to put in the brenula. Have you seen the brenula where, you know, uh, they put in the drip, antibiotics, and so forth? So it's not easy. And uh, we expect infections to come, that's what they say. And this week, she got an infection when you messaged me. So 
just to share with you something, I, I've seen a trend. Whenever something like this happens, blessing is waiting at the other end, actually, just to share with you. So when you go through a difficulty, it's actually an opportunity for a breakthrough. So when I got the message, the flesh that's dead tried to just say, why not we just cancel this Sunday's thing because Elena is not feeling well. And whenever she has an infection, she has to get admitted because she needs antibiotics through the uh, intravenous line. Orally, it's quite difficult. So what we did was we prayed and we believed and by the grace of God, this fever could have gone quite long. By the third day, it broke in the name of Jesus and she's well. Today you saw her. She's a little bit shy. Uh, but I want to share you even a bigger testimony. Uh, her a lymphatic malformation basically causes a swelling on the chest and the uh, and the uh, her, her her areas which are affected was the uh, arm and also the chest and the back a little bit. Last year, October, right after we celebrated her second year birthday, she developed a lump uh, on the neck, which was something new to us because uh, she was never affected in that area. Let me just show you a picture. Um, are we on? All right. That's right. Uh, can you see the lump? Yeah, so this, that was really sudden. We woke up on a Saturday and we saw the lump. So it was like one hurdle after the uh, hurdle. You know, are you going through such a situation in your life? Like one hurdle after the hurdle? Well, if you're going through hurdles, take note, God has a huge plan for you. That's why attacks are coming in. But I'll share you the truth behind all this. So when we saw this, uh, we just observed, because I'm a doctor, so I, I, I basically know... Uh, uh, to a certain extent, how to manage this condition. But of course, I need help too. So we observed for a month, the swelling was not going down. Um, what we did was, uh, after a month, we decided, let's go and see a Pete's pediatric surgeon. We, we met a very uh, experienced pediatric surgeon in Sunway Medical Center. So she told us that um, the swelling is huge and she has a risk of uh, developing infection on this area. And that infection, if you don't treat it, it can it become abscess. Uh, have you seen an abscess? In Malay, we call it bisol, you know, when pus comes out. And that can be quite, uh, for an adult, it's okay, but for a child, the neck area is a little bit dangerous. So she told us that uh, we can observe for another month, but maximum one month, after which we have to intervene. So there were two options. One was a procedure called sclerotherapy. Now, just to make it simple, sclerotherapy is now, now I want you to look at the swelling. I want you to look at the swelling because each time I see the swelling, I see the greatness of God, how it's not there now. Um, the doctor said that we have to put an injection. So you'll inject a needle into the swelling and, uh, and they will administer a sclerosin chemical. It's actually to induce inflammation. So it will cause the swelling to get bigger red and hopefully it fibrosis. That means it shrinks. And that is hopefully, it's not guaranteed. So... This will require my child to be under GA. Do you know what's GA? So they get, uh, you know, uh, they give general anesthetic drugs. So for kids, there are complications. Uh, and of course, they follow the weight, but we have to expect complications that can occur. So a lot of things. Um, but amazingly, I want to share with you, this is what happened. So she said that we might have to do sclerosin therapy, not once, not twice, but a few times. And if that does not work, we have to do a surgical resection. So uh, they will literally take out the swelling through operation, open operation. So I went back home and told my wife, I'm not interested. Uh, and adding to that, uh, they did an ultrasound, they found that it was bleeding actually. So when we met the pediatric surgeon, she told us, go and meet a pediatric dermatologist. So when you go to hospital, we keep meeting a lot of doctors. I, I, I think some of you might be meeting a few different faces and one guy will say one thing, another guy will say one thing and at the end of the day, the patient gets confused. Uh, are you confused? No? <laughs> and... Uh, at this point, when we met the Pete's dermatologist, she, she, she scared us even more. She said, oh, we've got to start antibiotics immediately. But there's no signs of infection, so I asked, do we need to? And then she said, well, you can just observe and see. So I could see that there was no certainty on this condition. You have to understand this. And I don't blame my colleagues. It's not a very straightforward condition. And then she says that we might need to start your kid on aspirin. Have you heard of aspirin? Yeah. Because uh, that uh, bleeding can turn into blood clots and that can cause massive complications. So we took everything with a pinch of salt and we came back home and we said, uh, not, we didn't, I, I decided not, not to go ahead with the medicine. We came back, one month passed by, the swelling is still there. 
two months pass by, the swelling is still there. Sometimes your condition can be just remaining and you know, you just find your hope being shattered lesser and it's just getting lower and lower. I just want to share with you, Scripture says that you fix your eyes on what is unseen, not on what is seen. For what is unseen is permanent, what is seen is temporal. Whatever sicknesses that you're facing, if you truly believe that Christ can heal you, it is just temporal. Remember, with God, nothing is impossible. Cut the story short, uh, three months back, this is about after seven, eight months, we started to see something happening to the swelling. Now, my wife would do this, and I'm the preacher, but I believe that God worked through my wife. My wife would do this routine prayer when she says grace for my kid before she eats. She says, and this is uh, exact words, I quote her uh, verbatim. She would say, Lord, I thank you for your healing. Not, not, Lord, please heal her. Lord, I beg, no, no, no. She was saying, Lord, I thank you for your healing for Elena from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. This is the same prayer she's been doing. And lo and behold, about three months ago, we started seeing the swelling reduce. Today, uh, this is her neck right here. It just disappeared. So God get, uh, did a divine surgical operation which did not have any complications. Now with that said, uh, I would still urge you to go with your follow-ups with your doctor. But you can always have a second opinion with a doctor as a believer. And there's nothing wrong. Please go for your follow-ups. I'm not asking you to stop. But when the Holy Spirit leads you in a manner, there is a reason. When you go through a sickness, there is a breakthrough or rather an opportunity for you to be a vessel to glorify God's work. Today, you've seen it for yourself. This is evidence. It's not hearsay. You're seeing it for yourself later. You can go and check my child's neck also if you want to, if you would doubt this picture, whether I photo edited or not. But this is a neck. You know, we didn't see her side of her neck for eight months and today she has such a beautiful neck. And now my eyes are just on her neck all the time. You know, thanking God for His glory. Let's give God a, a clap offering. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. As the gospel is being preached, now some of you might think that, you know, once a man of God anoints, or probably lays his hands on you, you can be healed. Yeah, that's true. But even when the gospel is preached, while you're sitting down and hearing, the gospel turns and becomes the power of God to save you if you truly believe. And to believe, it's very simple, is to keep hearing the word of God. That's what I did for the eight months. Instead of going and asking third opinion, fourth, some of you, I, I can see some of you might go fourth opinion, fifth opinion. Some of you might see the traditional doctor. Some of you will see the neighbors, Tabib China, Tabib India. You know, all these things, right? Because I know, I know, you know, you just want to get well. And I do understand that. But I think the best posture for a believer is just to sit down and hear the word of God. That's it. It's as simple as that. Just keep hearing. I want to encourage you. Take today's sermon. Keep hearing from Monday all the way to Sunday till your next preacher comes. Because the gospel is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, you know, I came to a point where this entire uh, thing that happened to me brought me to the end of myself. I just realized that without God, I cannot breathe. I just cannot survive. And I will boast on my infirmities because that's where the secret is. When you come to the Lord in your weakness, it is written that I will boast in my infirmity so that the power of Christ may rest on me. So as every step that you go, you make, praise, uh, the Lord will show His power through you. You become a vessel. You become a great vessel. The more you surrender, the more He manifests. Remember, Christ dwells in you. You are Christ manifested today. Today, I don't come to you as Dr. Alvin. I'm reduced. Today, I come as Christ speaking through the body of Alvin. And I'm given the opportunity. Today, you have the opportunity to be that same vessel. And the Lord hears. I want to encourage you as you're hearing the gospel today, your sicknesses are going to start leaving you today itself. It's going to start leaving you today. People who cannot speak, their tongues will be loose even today. People who cannot hear, they will suddenly hear things they have never heard before. And those who have been searching and yearning for the Holy Spirit to speak to them, today you will start to hear more clear. And I pray that the Lord will grant you the spirit of revelation and knowledge of who God is. 
the Lord hears. Praise child of God. Let's turn to scripture. Um, let's go to Psalms chapter 6. Psalms chapter 6, uh, verses 8. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For the Lord had heard the voice of my weeping. Again, I repeat, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. All these workers of iniquity could be your enemies, could be the sickness, could even be the financial issue you're going through. Even as I'm speaking right now, the Lord can restore finances. A quick testimony. Uh, just a, I'm now in the verge of opening up my own physical clinic. I have my online clinic and open up my physical clinic. A lot of challenges came. And, uh, you know, I started talking about my clinic. So the clinic which I'm currently serving uh, as a partner doctor got to find out that I'm going to open up a clinic nearby and he immediately told me to leave my service and that took about 80% of my income. All right? And of course, it made me think, what should I do? You know, you know we've come to a situation that you, the opportunities are taken away and what should you do? Well, I did the same thing. I just heard the gospel. I keep hearing the word and that's the only thing that I do. And as I kept doing that, opportunities started coming. Opportunities started coming and we've never been in lack. Precious, precious child of God, that issue that you're going through, that broken relationship, that broken relationship they're going through with a family member, it's so impossible for you to even look at your family member. Just looking at your family member or friend will cause so much of bitterness to rise up. Are you in that situation? Precious child of God, take note, it's not your family member or friend. You have to understand that we wage war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of this world. You have to understand it's, it's beyond what you see. There are spiritual forces whispering thoughts into people and causing them to speak things that they will regret later. I want you to let go. Let go and let God come over because the Lord hears. The Lord has heard the voice of your weeping. Verse 6 says that I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Have you been in a situation where you're sleeping throughout the night and you're sweating? Sweating with anxiety. As a head of the house, you're the guy of the house. You can't share this with your wife, probably, because your wife has her own problems and now you don't know what to do. Well, I encourage you to share. But I think the first person that you should go to share is our Lord Jesus because He hears. I literally can tell you He hears all the things that you're going through. In fact, Scripture says that He collects your tears in a bottle. Everything is collected. Everything. He knows more about you than you can ever know about yourself. Now, this is our position right here. Today, physically, you're here in Subang Jaya. Right now, your physical sense is here. But do you know that in you, there's a spirit man? That's your true identity. This is just a vessel. That is your true identity, the spirit man. And while you're sitting right here, some of you are wide awake, some of you are dozing off into spiritual slumber and it's okay. But I want to really encourage you in doing this thing. Take note, as while you are in Subang Jaya, your spirit man is in another place. He's not here. In fact, he's with someone who's really powerful. And when you understand that, you'll start to see all your challenges in a very different manner. Sometimes we magnify the problems instead of magnifying God. You know why? Because the feelings of anxiety, I know, I know how it feels that spirit of heaviness. And let me share with you how to overcome these areas. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. It's written, And had raised us up together. God has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Some of you have read the book of Ephesians. But today, I'll, let me give you a little bit of insight. As you're seated right here, as I'm right here, my spirit man is in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Christ is a location, precious child of God. You're seated in heavenly places. So when you're seated with heavenly places, that is because you are joined here with Christ if you have accepted Christ as your personal saviour. But what the devil has done is he will start to focus, make you focus on what you're seeing. So you're so distracted by what you're seeing and not the true reality of where you are in the spirit man. This is what it means to go into the spiritual realm, to understand that because when you think in the mind of Christ merged in you, you will start to speak differently. It's written, with the heart one believes unto righteousness and confession is made unto the mouth 
into salvation. You can literally change the atmosphere of your condition. Do you, do you remember what I just told you? My wife would say, Lord, I thank you for healing Elena from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. She was changing her atmosphere. She was literally changing her atmosphere. Literally changing atmosphere. You can change your atmosphere. Atmosphere is so crucial. The people that you mix with. Do you realize when you mix with negative people, it's so easy to start gossiping about Elder Simon? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you feel that? Or against Pastor Victoria, for example? And then you realize the atmosphere changes. So how do you remain in the right atmosphere, the heavenly atmosphere, to take note of this? Again, I repeat, let's go through. And God has raised us up together. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is where you're sitting. Open your eyes, precious child of God. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, sorry, uh, verses 7. And I want to read this from the message version. You can take a look up here. Now God has us where He wants us. He does not want you in your misery. But God has us where He wants us with all the time in this world. You might be thinking you're at the age of 70 or 80. My, my dad is seeing uh, this online with my mom. My dad is 78. My mom is 72. And let me share with you, another, uh, you know, I want to get, keep telling you testimonies. It's very crucial because it's written that they overcame the evil one through the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So testimonies are crucial. Never, when somebody talks about what God has done, listen, because that can be the saving power and the overcoming power to overcome the evil one. It's really uh, very crucial. Now, my mom struggled with long COVID-19 syndrome. After COVID-19, she contracted. She didn't have any symptoms. But a few months after that, her blood, her blood parameters started to become abnormal. And then she started to have problems with her knees to the extent she could not walk. And in these conditions, uh, we, we suspected she had autoimmune-related conditions. Have you heard of autoimmune diseases? I believe there's like a spirit of suicide. Autoimmune means your immune cells, which are supposed to be working for you, it's killing you, actually. Instead of working for you, it's killing you slowly. So that's why we give immunosuppressants to prevent that killing or that uh, destroying process. That's why they give. But the issue with immunosuppressants, uh, the doctors will tell, we need to monitor your bloods because there are side effects of that. Now, if your immunosuppressants continue, don't worry, your doctor will monitor, he will guide you. I'm not fear-mongering here, but I just want you to take note. So, what we did with my mom was this. I brought her to SGMC, we met a gastroenterologist, we, we brought her to, uh, she did a scope up and down. Can you imagine doing a scope up and down at the age of 70? two times, up and down, within two weeks, because her hemoglobin count dropped. So we're thinking, is she bleeding from somewhere? Being a doctor, you start to think, you know. Sometimes when you have a family member who's not well, what do you do? You panic more than you think, you realize? And then you start calling Uncle Tan, Uncle Mutu, uh, your neighbor Ahmad, and then you start calling everyone and say, what do you think about this disease, you know? It's even call, call your mechanic to ask him about this sickness, what do you think about it? All these things you will start doing, right? Because we are just panicking, right? What do you do? The Lord hears. The Lord hears. I want to encourage you. Be a man. Be a woman. Kneel down and tell the Lord, Daddy God, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. But what I know is, I'm going to cast my cares unto you for you care it for me. And as you do that, you can sing psalms and hymns to yourself. And when you do that, you're already walking in the Spirit. It's written in the Scripture in the book of Ephesians. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. King David always spoke to himself in psalms and hymns. Do you remember? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. For we, we are forgetful. That's why we have to remember, remind ourselves. Forget not all my benefits. And he's talking to his own soul. Soul. Your emotions. Soul is where you make your decisions of life that can change your future. And that's where the devil hits. He hits your soul. He makes you anxious. And when you're anxious, do you make good decisions? Of course not. You will make decisions that will cause disasters. Precious child of God, what we did with mom, because there was not much of things that we can do for long COVID, we, we can supplement here and there, but there's a limitation. So what I did was this. I decided 
and I believe and I want to encourage you the gospel is the power of God to salvation that means salvation means sozo in the Greek it can encompass healing restoration welfare go through your Greek then you'll understand salvation of course it's saving you from hell to heaven that's just one but there's many layers of the word called salvation so healing restoration of relationships your welfare your prosperity in terms of your soul your finances is part of salvation actually and that's why Jesus died on the cross for you so what I did I just did this I preached the gospel week after week now she's seeing it right here and guess what a hemoglobin counts went down to 9.5 we met all the experts in the field they could not explain why and then they start suspecting she might have a bone marrow issue and then they want to do a bone marrow aspiration wow so many procedures huh? have you heard of this and nothing wrong nothing wrong but i told my mom at this age let's just take it slow all right i don't think you want to go through all these procedures and guess what happened we just spoke the gospel so every week i'll meet up in my mom's place we'll preach the gospel we'll preach the gospel and listen my parents are pastors so they humble themselves to listen to their son who's half their age half their age. sometimes god you have to understand that you know to listen takes humility and god gives grace to the humble and truly i saw the grace of god working in my mom i'm sorry i couldn't put it on screen but just to share with you i i, I did put this on my preaching session last week my mother from 9.5 her hemoglobin count without any supplementation without any blood transfusion went up to 11.5 by god's hands alone hallelujah so hearing the gospel is that powerful even as i'm speaking to you right now the holy spirit is already in work with his ministration of angels to execute his power of miracles in your life precious child of god just said now god has us where he wants us with all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in christ jesus we are now in the dispensation of grace and let me just share with you what it means now verses 8 is written look at this saving is all his idea saving is all his idea meaning everything he thinks when he look at you is safe 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 and safe even if he permits now remember sicknesses don't come from the lord uh, have you seen anywhere in the scripture in the gospels where jesus would say come let me give you leprosy and then after 5 minutes let me heal you no such thing they were already inflicted with diseases and the lord came to heal them it's written jesus went around cities villages teaching in the synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom like what i'm doing right now and healing all manners of sickness all not some not majority all manners of sicknesses and all manners of diseases as you just saving is all his idea and all his work all we do is trust him enough to let him do it trust him enough to let him do it it's god's gift from start to finish it's god's gift from start to finish can i encourage you whatever you're going through right now right now right now i'm talking right now in this day on august precious child of god god is already in the business of saving as you're sitting down and listening give yourself an opportunity to receive his healing would you say amen to that give yourself an opportunity to receive the restoration with that particular family member that you felt that is impossible to be mended can you say amen to that precious child of god the lord loves you so much deeply loves you but why did he permit the sickness to happen to my child is it because i messed up is it because my wife messed up is it because my grandfather messed up somewhere precious child of god didn't you hear the scripture when the disciples asked jesus why was this man born blind was it because of his sin his father's sin or his mother's sin and the lord said neither but it for it was here so that my works will be glorified today i have given you two major testimonies of course the third will be me and eczema that the lord's name will be glorified in your turmoil precious child of god that's why the lord wants you he gives you an opportunity to grow stronger so take note every problem that comes the lord will start changing the wavelength the atmosphere of your life very quickly from a business perspective for business entrepreneurs right here uh, i run, i run my own telemed consultation service and also as i'm as i'm sharing with you I've, i'm now in the verge of opening up my physical clinic 
When I opened up a physical clinic, guess what happened? I bought, uh, we bought a property and uh, we went on with the renovation. So our contractor said, uh, Doc, let's just start the renovation. If Majile says to stop, then we stop. Lah. So I said, okay, all right. Uh, but I said, uh, whatever it is, let's follow procedure. I said, ah, don't worry, don't worry. And within one week, we got a love letter from the Majlis. Okay, we literally didn't do anything. So they said that uh, you got to apply. So we applied for, you know, the different types of renovation permits that you apply. So we applied for permit kachir because we're not breaking the, the structure. We're just doing partitions, you know, normal clinic setting. Lah. Now, uh, what happened was uh, we waited for a few weeks and nothing happened. And then I called up to find out what's happening. And then they said, uh, oh, it'll take another month. It'll take another month. Okay. And next thing you know, when I called up, coincidentally, that day they came to do a check, a spot check. Remember when you go to, go to school and your pengawas to do a spot check? You know, is your hair long, short? So they did a spot check on the shop lot and they found out at the back of, my, of the shop lot that I purchased, there was an erected structure which the previous owner did not get the permit. Now, I didn't know this. The previous owner didn't tell me. Probably I didn't do my due diligence. So I'm not going to blame anyone. So it was stuck. Then they say you have to... Uh, engage with the architect. Now we have to cough up more money because the architect plan is not... Any architects here? Any architects here? No one? Okay. Normally, architect plan would be about ranging five to 50,000. All right? So it depends on your, uh, your floor plan and so forth. Now, this is so simple. You don't need an architect plan, but unfortunately, because of legalities, we have. And guess what? What did I do? Did I call up the YB for Nilai, the valuable town? and try to work my... I mean, that's what we do, right? We use... Con and nothing wrong using connections. But I use my connection in the heavenly places. This is my connection. You have to understand that you are royalty, precious child of God. The Lord said, nobody gets access to Father except to me. Now, because of Jesus, now I go to the Father in the position and name of Jesus. The word called Onoma of Christ. That means I go, not just in the name, but the person of Jesus Christ. Hasn't, haven't you heard the scripture saying that Christ dwells in you? Have you heard of that? That Christ lives in you? This is what it means to take up. But many of us, we are not taking up that authority, precious child of God. You can change the atmosphere of your condition, of entire problems. And that's what I did. And guess what? Uh, I, I just heard the gospel, prayed, and I started calling up architects just to get like a quote. And guess what? God gave me a very honest architect. I've never heard of an architect so nice. He said, I told him my situation, among all the architects, uh, they were all ready to do the floor plan. I just have to share with them the details. And guess what? This architect tells me, Doc, you don't even need to get architect plan. Just remove the structure and you can apply for your permit. Huh? Oh, it's so easy. Why didn't the Majlis people tell me? Well, uh, it's just, they're just following procedure. And I called up Majlis and they said, yes, it's possible. Look at that. And I didn't call up YB. I didn't call BY. I didn't call anyone. I called up my Father in heaven. And today you have that same access to change the atmosphere. The Lord has picked you in your family to make an atmosphere change. Oh, trust me. When you kneel down, it's up to you when you kneel down. I'm not putting a law to that. For me, I like honoring the Lord. It's written that the angel of the Lord or innumerable company of angels encamped those who fear the Lord. Now, fearing is not how you fear your father or mother. Fearing means giving reverential or honor. You know, when the king comes, do you just say, what's up? No, you, you follow procedure, right? So the king of all kings, the lord of all lords, you are now given access into the throne room. Are you accessing? And today you have any access. At 1 a.m. you can access him. 2 a.m. you can access him. 3 a.m. you can access him. Precious child of God, this is what I want to encourage you. And this is the truth of it. Hebrews 12, 22 says, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22, it says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion. This is where you are, the holy mountain of the Lord. And unto the city of the living God. He's not a God who's far away, precious child of God. He's a God who's omnipresent. Literally, even though you feel He's not with you, He has never left you nor forsaken you. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Do you know that angels can be stationed to comfort you? Have you heard of the scripture when Jesus was tempted by the devil and he finished the temptation? What happened? A huge amount of angels came to comfort him. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of comfort. He can give you comfort. But how do you get this? Dr. Alvin, tell me. Be open to me. 
how do you work under comfort when you're going through trials and tribulations? You know, you come to extend now, every trial that comes, I'm looking forward for the breakthrough. It's different already. Three years ago, I wouldn't speak like this, but now because of so many problems coming, I come to realize I'm going to be just like how the Spirit of the Lord was upon David. Consume that Goliath. Consume that Goliath in your life, precious child of God. You can do it. That Goliath could be your sickness. You can consume it. Oh, he is consumable. You know why? Because if God is on my side, who can be against me? Hallelujah. And it's written that to an innumerable company of angels. Do you know what that means? Millions upon millions upon millions. Innumerable company of angels. We tend to forget the ministration of angels. The Holy Spirit works through the ministration of angels. Now, we don't pray to angels, that's definite. We pray to our Father. But the Father has messengers. Haven't you heard of the angel Gabriel that was a messenger to the mother of Jesus? Haven't you heard the scriptures? Now, we are, I'm reading the same scripture with you, right? And the Lord gives you an opportunity. It's written, even David, David would say, Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, who excel in strength to do His command, commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. So the Holy Spirit will give you the rhema, the voice of His Word to change the situation. Remember, power and life, lies, uh, the power of the tongue, or rather power of life and death lies in your tongue. What you say can become into reality. So when my, my, my you know, my, my, wo my woman, it's my wife, my my woman, who was praying for Elena, when she was praying for Elena, she could have said, Lord, is it your will to heal? Yes. Haven't you heard of the scriptures saying, the leper will come to Jesus and say, Lord, I know you can, but are you willing? What did he say? I am. I am willing. You might doubt, but the Lord sent me here to remind you, he is willing to restore and heal you. And the only thing you need to do is sit down at the feet of Jesus and listen like how Mary listened. Don't be Martha, running here and there, being practical, getting everything solved. Because if you're going to do that, you're going to be very stressed up, precious child of God. I want you to go to the next part, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. I want you to listen very closely because your breakthrough is going to happen right now. Your breakthrough is going to happen right now. Isaiah 61 verses 1 says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings. To preach good tidings. This is the gospel, precious child of God. Do you remember somebody quoting this? His name was Jesus in the synagogue. It's written, preach good tidings unto the meek. Unto the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, precious child of God. Today, that preacher is standing right in front of you. Listen, I want to share with you something. When you're going through any difficulty, you can see it in two directions. One is to think like the world, struggle, or think in the likeness of Christ and surrender your struggles unto Him. Surrender your struggles. What do I do? Let me share with you. When I'm going through a difficult moment, how do I overcome? Remember, your feelings are not real. Your feelings are not permanent, precious child of God. Oh, trust me. Because the things that I fear never happen. They told me my child will get infection. It didn't happen. They told me a child will get abscess. It didn't happen. They told me that they have to do surgical intervention. We didn't do anything and it just went off. So all the feelings of fear, if you ask me now when I'm thinking, it was all a wasted feeling actually. So how, what do I do? When I, but I'm going through the difficulty, Dr. Alvin, that I'm so heavy, I, I, I can't even breathe. Have you been in that situation? I've been in a situation multiple times. Like, it's so overwhelming. Hey, even people like Elijah, who called fire from heaven, ran away because of one woman, you know. Can you imagine? Call, calling fire from heaven, I mean, this is a massive uh, demonstration of God's power. He's running because of one woman who is threatening to kill him. So, remember, what you're going through, Scripture has said that there are brothers and sisters going through the same affliction as you, so you're not alone. So don't worry. Don't worry. But in this situation, what do I do? 
Let me share with you the first thing I do. This is the wisdom. I start singing in spiritual psalms and hymns according to my situation. There's so much of power. When you sing in worship, just now uh, I noticed the worship leader, he likes hymns, and hymns are really powerful, really powerful. Even though I might, I might dress with my jeans, but I love hymns. I love new songs too. I love hymns. And when I'm down, I start singing, I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. At any time, I don't know what to do. So I will cast all my cares upon you, Jesus. And you start singing. I'm telling you, it will strengthen you. I'm telling you based on not other people's experience, what I have experienced, I've seen the evidence of God, and I want to encourage you, it can be done. And I want to encourage you, the Lord hears. The Lord hears, precious child of God. I want you to go to the next one. Verses 2. God sent me. Blessed child of God, God literally sent me to announce the year of His grace, a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies and to comfort all who mourn. Those who are coming against you, precious child of God, they have been destroyed already. They have been destroyed. They are just like a barking dog. Do you bark back to a barking dog? No. You look at the Father and you look at the Scripture and you are reminded who you are. Listen, we are now in the dispensation of the grace of God. It's written a celebration of God's destruction of of our enemies, precious child of God, that enemy has been destroyed under the feet of Christ and now you are joined hairs with Christ. So even though you're going through the difficulty, you're feeling the symptom, the devil is speaking to you, telling you, no, you're not going to survive. No, you have only three months to live. No, it is impossible for your marriage to be mended. It is impossible, precious child of God, Enemies have been already destroyed. Your feelings are not reality. The Word of God is the truth, is the reality. And I'm telling you, I've shown you multiple evidences. I, I, I don't know what more to share with you, but this is what it's all about. That Christ truly knows you. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to say certain prayers. You know, I notice sometimes, uh, my, my wife is here, uh, you know, when um, sometimes we do, we do argue. Uh, I'm not saying that we don't. And uh, she's looking at me one kind. <laughs> and you know, there's a saying, right? The wife is always right. No matter what. No matter what happens. No matter World War Three, the wife is always right. Oh, am I the only person here having this problem? <laughs> Probably I am. And uh, there are certain times I've noticed I start to, when I'm having an argument with my wife, and I'm, I know you have gone through this, you start to think about the past, what your wife said to you, and bitterness starts to rise up. Do you know what's happening actually? Take note, there are spiritual warfares which are happening even as we go, and it comes against the church, even against believers. You will start to whisper, you better put your wife into place. If not, she's going to go above your head. And then she'll tell your wife, you better put this man in his place. If not, she's going to go over your... You see what the devil does? He whispers here, whispers there, and then he takes a step back, sees you fight, and laughs about it. Precious child of God, put a stop to that laugh. The true reality is, your wife loves you. She might not say it, she might kick you, like today, my wife kicked me today. I don't have no, no idea why. Kick of love. <laughs> you know? But your lo wife loves you. You know, I'm convicted that no matter what happens, that the love of God, now love is not just a fuzzy feeling, it's a decision. It's a decision that God has given you grace to love your wife, to cherish your wife. Husbands, cherish your wife. Sometimes your wife speaks out of emotions, but she can be your blind spot. There's so many times that 
my wife made multiple mistakes. There's so many times I've made multiple mistakes. But there's so many times that things that I never thought about, my wife brings into my attention. And then I just, wow. You know? And then after five minutes, it's my fault. You know, it's, it's always like that, that routine, you know? So, but I praise God. In marriage, you start to see the love that you have towards your wife, towards your husband. And that comes through the working of the grace of God, precious child of God. Let's go to the next part. To comfort all who mourn, precious child of God. To comfort all who mourn. To care for the needs, verses 3. To care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. Give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes. Beauty for ashes. All right? Messages of joy instead of news of doom. Messages of joy. Just like Brother Tim. The joy of the Lord is your strength, Brother Tim. Where is Brother Tim? Is he here? All right, all right. He's a very joyful person. You need messages of joy here and there. Not here and there. In fact, you need messages of joy continuously. All right? A praising heart instead of a language spirit. This means, precious child of God, taking up a garment of praise. A garment. I want you to look at this uh, denim jacket I'm wearing. It's a garment of praise over the spirit of heaviness. So when you go through difficulties, start praising Him. Lord, I thank you. Start thanking Him for the things you already have. Did you wake up today morning? Lord, I thank you for giving me an opportunity to wake up. I thank you, Lord, for giving me a beautiful wife. Even though your wife does not put makeup in the morning, I thank you for giving a me a beautiful wife. I thank you, Lord, for giving me a, beautiful, a, a good-looking husband. If you've lost your husband or not, then you start thanking, Lord, I thank you for the time I had with him on earth. And you start praising him and you start to see the tight thing. Trust me, this is not make-believe. I'm telling you, you'll start to see the atmosphere change. And when the atmosphere change, Precious child of God, you're giving reverential awe. Remember, we all fear things. We all fear. You either fear your problem or you fear God. There's only two things. You fear your problem, you give your problem your utmost attention. You want to solve it. But when you fear God, you give Him your utmost attention. You behold Him as in a mirror and you're transformed into His image from glory to glory in the position and name of Jesus. So you become Him manifested, precious child of God. Do you see what I'm saying? To care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. Messages of joy instead of news of doom. Praising heart instead of a language spirit. Rename them the oaks of righteousness. Not planted by yourself, but planted by God to display His glory. You have been made completely righteous in Christ. Remember, you and I can try to act righteous. You know, uh, you can pray for people and think that's righteous. You can fast and pray and think that's righteous. No, you fast and pray because it helps you to hear from the Lord easier. Now, fasting and praying is not a prerequisite. People can hear without fasting, all right? Even you read, read the scriptures, the disciples of John the Baptist to ask Jesus, how come we are fasting and your disciples are not fasting? Have you, you seen that? So, precious child of God, there's no law in that manner. But I would encourage you, if you have the opportunity to fast, do it out of a heart of receiving from the Lord, not to show the Lord, Lord, I fast, you heal me. It does not work that way, precious child of God. And you... Being righteous is not based on your actions. It was never based on your actions. Have you heard of the scripture that Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption? And it's written that he who knew no sin, the Father made him to be sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 So that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Every single day I wake up, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. For it's written, with the heart one believes unto righteousness and confession is made from his mouth unto salvation. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And when you start confessing that, you confess your true identity, precious child of God. And guess what? God has planted you as a tree, a very strong oak of righteousness. So when you go through difficulties, I'm coming to my last slide. James chapter 1 verses 2. Listen. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Are you going through a difficult moment right now? Count it all joy. The word joy comes from the word called kara. Kara. Do you know what kara means? I know Tim is a joyful person, but it's beyond Tim, unfortunately. Joy comes from the word called kara. Kara means grace recognized. The Greek. Meaning, you recognize the grace of God in your situation. Meaning, when you go through a difficulty, there's a grace of supply for you for the particular situation. But if you try to put your effort and try to solve it, you push His grace away. You push His grace away. 
There's a grace for every situation. There's a grace for you in your marriage. There's a grace for you in your business. There's a grace for you in your workplace. That's why the Lord says, you will only recognize my grace when you fall into diverse trials. And in fact, this word temptations in other uh, translations is also called trials. So the trial is actually an opportunity for you to grow. If I didn't go through the eczema, I won't be here. If I didn't go through all the things that I've seen in front of you, my words will be nothing. For it's written in scripture. Have you heard of the word, the, the saying, NATO? No action, talk only. Today I'm not talking. I'm talking with action. The action of not Alvin, but the action of my Father in heaven. Do you, do you get what I'm saying, precious child of God? So we don't live, a godly life is not mere talk, but an empowered life. So count it all joy. Understand that in that problem that you're facing, there is a grace for that particular situation. There is a grace for the particular situation for you to receive. What you need to do is this. Pray that the Lord gives you grace to increase your capacity to receive. Increase your capacity to receive. For it's written in the book of Romans, that those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So you reign over your sicknesses through the grace of God, through the gift of righteousness. You reign over your marriage through the grace of God, through the gift of righteousness. You reign over your business issues through the grace of God, through the gift of righteousness. Ask the Lord, increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. I want you to follow me. Close your eyes. Let me do a short prayer for you right now. Let me do, as, as I'm praying right now, there'll be deliverances happening right now. All right? I want you to just close your eyes, put, lift up your hands to the Lord. I'm not done with the sermon, but lift up your hands to the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Remember, when you lift up your hands, it's the act of worship, reverential awe to the Lord. I want you to follow up to me. Daddy God, I pray that you increase my capacity to receive your abundance of grace and increase my conviction Increase my conviction. Increase my belief. Increase my consciousness that I have received your gift of righteousness. Daddy God, give me the grace to reign in life. Daddy God, give me the grace to reign in life. Daddy God, give me the grace to reign in life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God a clap offering, precious child of God. And when you go through the trials and tribulations, I'm just giving you a very practical thing, what to do. Understand there's a grace. When the problem comes, there's a grace. Immediately, when the problem comes, there's a grace. The grace of God is so amazing. It's a very deep, it's like a deep ocean. If you ask me what is the grace of God, it's a deep ocean. We are just looking at the tip of the iceberg. There's so much to supply. Because when you run in the grace of God, you start humbling yourself. It's written, God gives grace to the humble. It's written, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The grace of God is a life changer. It is a changing, it can change your entire atmosphere. But knowing this, Precious child of God's written, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I shared this to my mom and dad. Mommy, daddy, you know the things we are going through. You know, this gospel meets that we are meeting. I have now realized why this has happened in front of me. Because it was given to me the opportunity to take up the authority in you. You can take up the authority in your family, precious child of God, and change the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Trust me. Trust me. Don't conclude on your matter. And I, tell, I told that knowing this, the trying of my faith, work at patience. Husbands, you have to have patience. A lot of patience. Wives, you need patience. A lot of patience. Why? Because without patience, we will start saying things that we don't mean. And we hurt our partner. Knowing this, the trying of your faith, work at patience. So that trial is actually making you more patient. What is so important about patience? It's written, but let patience have a perfect work. You have to allow, you have to let, you have to consent. But let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, 
wanting nothing. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Do you know what that means? If you want to receive, you know, you have to grow in the Lord. Growing the Lord is not growing religiously, it's growing spiritually. Growing in the spirit realm. And when that happens, precious child of God, you become perfect to the extent you want nothing. So your prayers are no more, I want this, I want that. Rather, I thank you for this. I thank you for that. Now, I'm not saying don't go, go with the Lord with your request, but it's written. Haven't you heard of the scriptures? Let your request be made known unto God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, we surpass it all understanding. It means your understanding of your problem, the shalom of God, we surpass it. It's a higher level of understanding. Will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. So you speak in the mind of Christ. You believe in the mind of Christ. Even faith, even faith is not something self-induced. Haven't you heard of the scripture, Galatians 2.20, it says, the life I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Meaning, I live by the faith of Jesus. I live by the faith of Jesus. Go back. Meditate Galatians 2.20 in your King James Version. King James Version. You'll understand what I'm saying. You come to a point where you want nothing. Can I invite the musicians to come on uh, stage? Precious child of God, when we go through trials and tribulations, the Lord hears. The Lord knows what you're going through. And He gives you an opportunity to grow. Just like my child, when she falls down, I give her opportunity to grow. If each time she's falling down, I'm going to pick her up, I don't give her an opportunity to grow. The Lord wants the best in you. He wants to perfect you. So you might be having questions, why is this happening to me? The Lord is allowing this to perfect you. The Lord is not inflicting sicknesses and diseases. We know who He is. But the Lord can turn everything. He can turn the tide. Was written that the Lord can work all things for your good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. And I want to encourage you, precious child of God, that the grace of God is found in these trials and tribulations. In these past three years, I've been growing and growing and growing. And I encourage you to grow with me. And as you grow, it will make a ripple effect to your family, to your wife, to your husband, to your kids. And you start to see the grace of God upon our lives. Do we have the song leader? Okay, lead us in a... Uh, worship. If, if you, you have this song, uh, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. Is that, is, that, is that possible? You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Can we just, uh, just stand up and two in the presence of the Lord? Stand up in the presence of the Lord and just lift up your hands and worship Him. And Lord, let the Lord minister. Don't worry, I'm not going to call an altar call unless the Lord leads. But I want you to just spend time with Him. Close your eyes. Don't worry about left and right. And spend time with Him as we sing this song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Daddy God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome. Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. Just to lift all your concerns unto the Lord, knowing that He is awesome in this place. Surrender all your cares to the Lord. 
know that you're talking to your Abba, to your Abba, who loves you deeply. Just cast your cares, cast your cares right now. All the things that you have been going through again and again, cast your cares. All the bitterness that you have, cast it all unto the Lord Jesus. Cast it all unto Him. All the problems you're facing, that healing that you need, just cast the sickness unto the Lord. Cast everything that you are burdened with unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Daddy God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing all of us here together to worship your holy name, Lord. Daddy God, I give you all reverential all, Lord Jesus, for without you, we are nothing, Lord Jesus. Without you, we are nothing, Lord Daddy God. Abba, I just want to pray, Lord God, for those who are not feeling well today, Lord God. Sicknesses that have been plaguing them, Lord Jesus. Daddy God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for your grace and mercy to be upon their lives, Lord. In the onoma of Christ, I declare, decree this healing to flow into you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Say, Karamakata Nambere Kesh Korosori Mithana Nana. Sebre ke karatana koro shikis kri makaratana bri ebe ka kara sebre kosh koro ni katana rika sebre karatana na karoto no bre kesh kere na makaka ka e kara sebre na bare ke ke na prokoto na resh kiri karatana sobre ka kana bre karatana koro sibriata shiriata sebre ka makaratini bre ke karatana baraka sebre na karatana na koro shiri ka sebre marada. Ebre kakara shikita na na kara se pre mara kata na Ebre kash krolo mokoro se ri mitana na kara te kara Shikera se pri kata na mar kope ni shikara na se kara pa ke pri kata Hallelujah That is God for those Lord God who are going through relationship problems Lord God I pray for your grace and mercy to fall upon them right now Lord Jesus Your grace and mercy to fall upon them Lord Jesus in the onoma of Christ, I declare and decree this. Your relationships be mended in the name of Jesus. Be mended in the name of Jesus. Receive this in the name of Jesus. Receive this in the name of Jesus. So rome kira tabara kaske. Es kroma katana na kara se break kara mokoro tuno no kuro. Si kara sara makara. For those who can speak in tongues, join me. Re kara se break kira tabara tan. Shiria da si brianta. Shirianda, Shirianda, na kare Shirianda. Shikriya bara, Shibriya bare tere. Shirianda, Shirianda, Shibriya na 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 na. Okre Shikriya da Shibriya na. Shirianda, Shibriya da bara kara Shiri kapara. Ebre kika da no koro soro mitana na na. Ebra kasi ebro moro to no koro to no mara. Di kara tana koro shkoro zo. Daddy God, I pray for those who are seeking for direction. The next step in their life. The next step in their life. Lord, I pray that you grant them the spirit of revelation. The spirit of knowledge of who you are. That the eyes of their heart be enlightened to your hope for their calling. For your hope for their calling. That their eyes be opened to the riches of your glorious inheritance in them. And not only that, for your exceeding greatness of your power towards them who believe. I declare and decree this, that the Lord gives you direction in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to rest. Rest in the presence of the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Speak in tongues. Rest, rest in Him, for He is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. For the Lord never fails. For the Lord never fails. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome in this place, above Father. You are worthy of all praise.
Daddy God, I just want to commit this time into your hands, Lord. Lord, you have seen your people, Lord. I pray, Lord, for your grace and mercy to be upon them, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, as they go back home, that they be encouraged to your true reality that you hear every inch of their prayer. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you charge your angels. We thank you for charging your angels to protect them throughout, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your healing. We thank you, Lord, for your restoration. And we thank you, Lord, for your grace, abundant grace upon their lives. We give you all glory. We give you all honour. The King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray unto you, Abba. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. Let's just remain standing. Thank you, Dr. Halvin, for the word. And the word has gone forth really powerful, fixing our eyes on Jesus and being strengthened in the word of God and having it close to our hearts at all times. Let's give the benediction. Go confident in the knowledge of God's steadfast love for you, assured of the healing touch of Jesus upon you and empowered by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit within you. May the grace of God be upon you and be a blessing to one another in the week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Receive your mercy.